Hello and welcome to alchemist.camp where we learn elixir and phoenix by building things. And today we're going to work on the planning actually of the new alchemist.camp site. So let's start off by hitting control shift V, jump into Visual Studio Code's built-in markdown previewer. For those of you that are new to the channel, this is the site that hosts the channel, alchemist.camp. Right now it is a Phoenix app, but it's just rendering a static home page, and all of these lessons that are in it have been hard coded in. Mostly it's a link to lessons and that's it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make a, a more full featured Phoenix app. It's gonna have a user controller for all the users that join the site. Then we'll have an auth controller that I'm not 100% comfortable calling a controller because really it's going to be a set of utilities other controllers use. It'll have a plug, have a bunch of plugs actually, say for restricting pages to admin only. We use that for pages that aren't published yet and for things that really are for administrating the site. A plug for restricting content to only logged in users versus unlogged in users and it'll actually do a lot of things uh, for the sessions. Um, there's going to be a separate session controller. Page controller is just the one that's built into Phoenix. That's so going to be like uh, the index page, the about page, that kind of thing. Then an episode controller, which will make one episode for each of these videos. And there will be text explaining the videos. It should actually be really useful for all of you that have just been watching on YouTube up through now. Then we'll have a resource page controller, which I haven't written in here yet, but essentially that'll be like the episode controllers, except it won't embed an episode inside it. So it'll be more like a normal blog page or a page that's introducing, say, a Phoenix book or any kind of useful thing for learners that's not an episode. And next is contacts. I'm going to have four that I'll break the app into, at least for now, maybe more in the future. We'll have accounts which will hold, say, users, credentials, all that stuff. Content will be episodes, resource pages, all the CMS kinds of things. We've got analytics, which is pretty straightforward. It's just the information about what's going on in the app. And this could be pages being viewed. It could be people signing up for different plans. It could be uh, people creating accounts or logging in, logging out, just whatever, uh, whatever I decide to track. And then uh, an other bucket for everything else that's difficult to decide where to place. Then there are schemas, which are inside of these various contexts. First is the user, which goes inside the accounts context. And the user context is kind of a, it's kind of a tricky one. A lot of times, in fact, every single place where I've worked, even like really well-respected places, the user schema has kind of gotten out of control. The beginning it starts off with something really small and then people just add more and more and more stuff to it and then you know eventually that schema's got like everything about like the role system and billing information just every possible thing is in the user schema i think that's part of why phoenix 1.3 moved to context is to avoid it so all that we'll have directly in the schema is going to be the name username and who referred the user? That's actually a pretty important thing. Then also is admin. This might change in the future. I might eventually make a, a separate model for handling roles, but this is something that basically gonna want anytime a user is loaded, even if we don't want much information about a user, we still need to know like if, they're, if they have privileges for certain things. I'm gonna be making that check all over the app. Um, other things will be will be loaded in. So credentials are their email, password hash, maybe in the future. This will also include uh, like auth tokens, things like that. They have a user ID. So I could look at user.credentials.email if I've chosen to preload the credentials into the user. Um, same thing with Stripe ID, that's a credential. Uh, Growsurf is... Uh, Kind of a, a viral marketing app that i'm planning on using and that's got an id there will be more information coming in there um, such as like what campaign the user participated in 
who they've referred Alchemist Camp to and so forth. And that that could, well, that will inter interact with uh, uh, various uh, rewards and things like that. Obviously, if someone is helping me a lot, I want to help them too. Next is a subscription plan. And this is 100% Stripe information. Like the schema is their schema. And I've basically just included it in the app so that I have a, a fairly robust way of dealing with uh, uh, the results of requests made to Stripe. And also so I could create a, a subscription on, um, on my side and send it off to Stripe and not be dealing with uh, a schemaless JSON for something that's this important to get right, basically. Uh, I've got a GrowSurf contact. Um, this rank information is like how well they're doing in their referral campaign compared to all their cohorts. There's an ID. Uh, this is not the same as the database ID. This plan ID generated by Stripe is also not the same as the, uh, the ID field of, of this schema. This is just uh, the ID that is used to refer to it in Stripe and GrowSurf respectively. Um, yeah, winner, referral count, all related to this GrowSurf viral marketing tool that uh, I'll probably get into in a future video, especially if I find it particularly effective. I'll, I'll share what it does and how it works for me. Okay, next is entities. Entities sounds like a very generic name, and it is, and that's on purpose. This is because there are a lot of things that I want a lot of different kinds of content to be able to do and to do in a uniform way. And I don't want to manually be adding the functionality to all of the different kinds of content and keeping it in sync and that kind of thing. So maybe I'll start off with a content type and then come back to entity in a minute. Articles. Yeah, articles are actually a really good place to start because they're simple. Uh, the site's going to have a whole bunch of blog posts or articles or whatever you want to call them. And each one is going to have the following things. It's going to have a title, like the most amazing way to handle state in an Elixir app. It'll have a slug, which is what's going to go in the URL, which might just be amazing-state, something like that. It'll be content, which will be uh, several paragraphs or however much uh, actual written content is in the meat of the article. And then there will be an entity ID. And the entity ID is going to link back to one of these entities. And that will hold data of whether if it's been published, whether if it requires login, whether if it's premium, and it'll actually connect to likes, like users can like pieces of content. Doesn't matter what content it is, the like is going to work the same way. So say I have uh, an episode that's not published yet. I'm going to make a rule so that if it's not published, a normal user can't see it. Only an admin user can see it. That'll apply to episodes or articles or other entities that I create in the future in the exact same way. So just one system to deal with all of it and requires a login. That's another, you know, that's another common thing. Like maybe random users on the site should be able to see episode information or see some of it but other things will require a login. Next is entity plan. So these are plans that grant people access to certain things in the site. For example, uh, it could be monetary, like someone could be paying a certain amount of money per month. There might be a basic plan and a premium plan that would grant different amounts of access to things on the site. Or it could be entirely non-monetary, like Someone might have contributed a lot. They might have learned a certain thing. They might have passed a certain quiz on the site. Now, there are no quizzes yet. If there were, they would be entities, and um, they could also be published or not, require a login or not, and so forth. But in whatever manner, there can be different plans, and different entities can require different plans to view them. Episodes are a, just a different kind of entity from articles. Basically the same thing, except uh, I'm actually going to add more to the schema. I think I have added more to the schema already. Like they'll have a link to 
a video and they'll also have the length of the video in the schema. Um, that way users can sort and say like, I just want to find videos that are over 20 minutes or under five minutes, you know, whatever. All right. Um, finally, we covered everything above this. Yes, we have. Um, finally, there are going to be events. And this event is very much like the entities above. They're only going to have an ID and a timestamp. And I add to this later, but for now, that's, that's what it's going to be. We'll have view events, subscribe events, unsubscribe events, referral events, share events. And whenever any of these events happen, uh, I'm going to collect various information and then send an event object to Keen.io, an analytics platform that's made specifically for developers and super powerful and pretty cheap. You know, you do do a bit more work yourself. It's a bit lower level. And that is it for the, the structure of the app. And that's a good stopping spot. The next video, I'll go over how I collect event data out of the con and bundle it into one JSON object to send off to my analytics provider. Till then, code on.